Hello everyone, I'm Toma from tomaboncho.com and the video from today is about focus hacking and how to have um, everything in focus and a, an incredibly sharp uh, landscape from foreground to background. Now initially, this photo, uh, on this photo that was made in the Dolomites Mountains in Italy, this here uh, is Trecime di Lavaredo. So for this video initially I've also recorded um, a short video on location but that short video wasn't really that short and I don't want you to fall asleep until the end of the video so I decided to um, to delete that video and explain the principles um, in, uh, in Lightroom and Photoshop and editing the photo. Now let's take a look at, the, at this photo first. What is the problem that you want to solve? You're shooting, as you can see, with a 17 millimeter lens on a full frame body and at f8. And I want to have this tower of rocks in focus and also all the other elements in, uh, to be in, uh, in focus as well. Now, the problem is that I'm really close to the tower and that is under my hyperfocal distance. And in short terms, the hyperfocal distance can be explained as the minimum distance of focus from where you will have a depth of field that will start at a certain value and will end in infinity. Any focus distance smaller than that distance, that hyperfocal distance, will result in a depth of field uh, that will not, uh, will not last until inf infinity. Okay? So this is the short um, the short version of the hyperfocal. Now, my focus distance to this tower was under my hy hyperfocal distance. And when that this happens, by the way, you can use an app I have for uh, Android um, Hyperfocal Pro, and it's great to give you the hyperfocal distance. Uh, distance. And for that hyperfocal, you'll also see um, the depth of field, how big your depth of field is. Okay, so I focused uh, my uh, lens on this rock tower and I've noticed that I have a focus distance smaller than the hyperfocal. Now, what do you have to do? You need to take several photos and focus over here and then focus over here and then focus on the mountains. And in the end, you'll have something like four photos. Usually, uh, four uh, or maximum five photos will do the trick and will ensure uh, you um, a sharper image from foreground to uh, to background. And I repeat, how do you know that you are under your hyperfocal distance? Use an Android map uh, app or uh, an iOS map. You don't have to carry um, lists of hyperfocals for different lenses and different apertures or m even memorize them. There is an app for this, use it. Okay, now the, uh, the administ administrate the... Oh, I'm babbling right now. Okay, the technical organization. Whenever I'm shooting and I know that it's going to be more photos that are going to be combined in only one photo, I do this mark over here with one finger and in the end another finger, okay? This means for me that all these photos will be combined as one. If I'm holding three fingers, this means there is going to be a panorama. Okay, the problem that I had with this, let's go into the develop module, uh, is that even though the photos are shot one after another in a very short period of time, the wind speed and the movement of the clouds was really uh, intense. So I have different, uh, different clouds in every photo, as you can see, and also different lights and shadows uh, in this rock tower over here and also in the mountains. So um, one of the problems that is, go is going to happen is going to be in the clouds. But very uh, um, this this kind of problem can be very easily uh, solved you just take one image where the clouds are sharp and um, compensate for the errors 
Okay, let's take a look at this element over here. This is the first photo when I placed the sharpness over here. And if I have, if I'm switching to the last photo, you see that these rocks over here are not that sharp anymore. Okay, but I have uh, a good amount of sharpness in the uh, in the peaks over here. Again, let's switch to the first photo and take a look at, at these details over here and see how they are fading. Okay. And see again how they're fading away. So this is the photo, the last photo when I placed my focus point on the on the rocks over here and this is the first photo. So something must be must uh, must be done. First of all, Let's enable profile correction and remove chromatic aberration. And I'm also going to go into the highlights. I'm not going to edit this photo too much, but I'm what I'm going to do is first of all synchronize all four to have that enable profile and remove chromatic aberration for all the photos. And then I'm going to switch from one photo to another just to make sure and to to take care of, of things like this so i'm dropping down the exposure over here my goal for this tutorial is not to edit the photo or to present you with uh, an awesome photo my goal is to show you the technique uh, in order to have perfectly sharp landscapes from foreground to background so before after you finished editing in lightroom there's going to be some editing editing in photoshop so let's recap you have a scenery like this where you want to have in sharp all the elements this one over here this one this one this one and the background okay if the focus point if the focus distance from your lens to this first element over here is under your hyperfocal distance then you have a problem because your depth of field will not be um, deep enough to ensure a perfectly sharp photo to the background and you'll have to take several photos I'm shooting at f8 for example because f8 or f11 gives me the maximum sharpness for this lens in my experience so I I shot four frames in first in the first frame I had the focus point over here then over here then over here and in the end on the mountains okay so I let's switch to Photoshop and I really hope that I made myself understood and clear about first of all the problem and then the technical solution on the field and now comes the Photoshop what you need to do is select all these four frames and first of all I'm going to export them in a folder let's call it stack or stack let's check uh, rename no file settings okay export now depending on the speed of your, of your computer you'll, ha you'll have to wait a little bit but I'm not going to uh, interrupt the video okay one more photo and that's it I think okay let's go to Photoshop first of all I'm going to um, import the photos and go file script load files into stack let's browse let's browse <laughs> let's browse for the for the photos okay so in the dolomites in the dolomites just scanning in the dolomites and stack okay and select all the four photos okay and attempt to automatically align source images yes click this because um, it's very likely that I've moved my um, my camera 
and even if you're moving just a little bit it's going to be uh, noticeable and as you can see there were some problems of alignment but I'm using the crop tool and let's crop the image just like this so the last image is on the bottom and the first image is up here let's go 100% control 1 on the keyboard shortcut so we have perfectly sharp um, stones over here and by the way I didn't apply I didn't apply any additional sharpness in Lightroom I'm also doing doing uh, that for um, in order to have even more sharp photos but for this example I wanted uh, you to see the sharpness of the lens okay so these are in perfect in perfect sharpness and let's take a look at the last photo as you can see the sharpness significantly is significantly dropped down but now I have more sharpness over here and if I have to compare this with my first photo it lacks detail on this area for example as you can see okay now let's see how you're going to blend these photos together of course that you can do it manually but it's going to be a pain in the butt uh, especially when you're going to have a lot more details than this so what you're going to do is uh, there was something over here auto auto blend layers okay click on this stack images click seamless tones and colors content aware fill transparent areas okay so have these two clicked and stack images click OK and you're waiting for the magic of the Photoshop to happen you have to know that this is a, a tool and every tool has its imperfections so there might be situations when the tool might fail for example in this area over here and I think I did something wrong yes I'm going to undo it because I want to have uh, the last uh, the last file where I'm when I'm focusing here on the rock I'll have to move this to another file control a to select it control C control N and I'm going to paste it on another file because I as I, I, I anticipated that the movement of the clouds will create some problems with the blending and I want to have a perfectly sharp sky in order to fix the, pro uh, the problems. That was uh, the issue. Control D to hide the selection. Let's again select all this and go edit auto blend again. Okay. Sorry for this delay. Okay. Creating seamless composition. Okay. and the result let's take a look control one to look 100 percent okay I have perfect sharpness over here I have sharpness over here I have sharpness and sharpness okay so everything is in sharp or as sharp as the lens can be now the problem as anticipated are over here in the move because the clouds moved so quickly uh, there were some problems but luckily for me I anticipated that and I've saved that uh, last image where I have the clouds in perfect sharpness now with the move tool click and drag it and before release it hold down shift to release it in the center of the frame okay and now I, I'm going to create a black mask holding the alt key while so I have this layer selected, hold down the ALT key, click on the mask and the mask appears black so none of this layer will be visible. Click on the mask, click on the brush tool or shortcut B, use the white color and the opacity of let's say 60, 70, now let's go 100%, what the hell. And use the bracket keys to increase the size of your brush and control plus to zoom into the photo and I'm going to paint into the mask revealing some areas oh my god you have to use a soft brush hardness 0% okay. 
Okay, let's fix the error. Let's see where we have the error. And I think that that was it. So we managed to escape easily. And as far as I'm looking, there are not uh, noticeable problems in the in the stone over here so I'm going to leave it like that let's go just for the sake of the video on a small adventure here I will use the color balance to remove some of the yellow from the from the grass and make it have a much more natural look and the mountains I'm going to paint into the mask with with black because now I want the stone to have a much more natural look so yes now the grass is green and the sky is blue and the rocks are like rocks <laughs> okay and a small brightness in this area over here fill the mask with black by reversing control I and then painting with white opacity 40% just like this now let's take a look once again perfect sharpness perfect sharpness 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 and perfect sharpness here is another small problem let's fix it think et voila okay so um, I really hope that I managed to keep this tutorial uh, short enough I, as I said in the beginning I don't want to, you to fall asleep the technique can be very complex the technique can be very tedious sometimes and uh, the explanations are also very complex and sometimes for ex at my workshops it takes for example an hour to to make the entire setup to check the hyperfocal to show to the participants how to focus in different um, in different spots and when is uh, appropriate to to stop uh, photographing when you have when you will have enough photos to do uh, a good photo uh, photo stacking to ensure perfect sharpness from foreground to to the background so I really hope that I managed to explain it well and also showing it well in Lightroom and Photoshop so um, feel free to to ask questions or post comments or share this YouTube channel with your friends most of all Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It will ensure my videos that it, it will ensure me that I'm doing a good job and seeing more subscribers. I'm going to create more videos. So it's very easy. It's a very easy concept. Okay, until next time, keep on photographing. It's the only way that you can get better. Thanks for watching and bye bye.